Hi, good morning, guys. So, uh, welcome back to the uh, video lesson. So, uh, in this video, I will be focusing on your lab worksheet, uh, like number two, uh, which you guys will be doing next week. Um, if you have not received a copy of the lab two worksheet, you can actually go to uh, Google Drive and you can actually find it here. So the file name will be lab uh, 3E and uh, the like number two worksheet. So for uh, the upcoming lab, we will be focusing on refraction. Okay, refraction. So if you open up the document, it looks something like that. Uh, you will be given a glass block and then uh, paper and uh, optical pins and uh, you are going to investigate the effect of refraction okay again through the uh, this time round uh, i will run through this uh, lab with you uh, it is going to be a timed practice so uh, once you enter the lab you will be expected to uh, just conduct the experiment and then uh, at the end of the second period you will have to submit the completed report so the hard copy of this lab worksheet, I will give it to you. You do not need to print, but uh, if you have your own printer, uh, be my guest. Please uh, print it out and then uh, you can take down notes uh, as I am going through uh, during this uh, video lesson. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, I will run through with you because it is kind of uh, complicated. So let's uh, read through this uh, lab report together. So first you are again given a blank piece of A4. And uh, you are supposed to uh, uh, fill up the lines and align the thing. So what you are given is that uh, on the you, you are going to put your paper in a portrait like that. And then uh, after that, you are going to draw the line QR uh, such that you are 15 cm from the top edge. So from the top edge, uh, measure 15 cm. And then you will draw and label your line QR. Okay, here you will, see, you will see this part whereby it says place the glass block such that the longer side is in contact with QR. Okay, so it doesn't really tell you uh, how far it is you should place from the edge of the paper. So it means that it doesn't matter. Okay, but after you place your glass block, do make sure that you outline the, the, the placement. And of course, please look at the orientation of the glass block because sometimes in the exam, they may require you to put your glass block like this standing up. So it's not always the case whereby you, have, you, you need to put your glass block like this. So most of our practice, right, we put your glass block like that flat on the paper. But uh, one year in O level, they actually required the glass block to be standing up and then all our students fumbled. So please take note how it will look like. So for this case, if you look at these two diagrams, you are supposed to put the glass block in this orientation. But if your, your diagram looks something like this and they draw the glass block like this, the narrow side, that means this side up, then it should look like this. So be very careful. Do put a star over here and tell yourself that hey O level ah, please remember to check the orientation of the block ah. okay it's not always lying flat okay don't have this illusion of it so for our case we can just put the glass block one of the longer edge on the line QR and remember to mark out the position of the glass block because once you shift the glass block uh, the rest of the reading will carry a certain random error. So actually the placement of your glass block is controlled. Mm. Okay, so once you do that, you're actually being asked to draw a normal at a distance. Oh, down here there's an error. It is not L, okay? So please delete this L. It's just draw a normal at a distance 1 cm in figure 1. So here you see figure 1, there's no L. Okay, it's just from the from the short edge, you just need to measure 1 cm away from it and draw a normal. So of course for you, the glass block is still there, so you cannot draw under the glass block. It's fine. Just draw here and here. Mark out here is 1 cm. Yeah. And then let's go on to uh, the next step. So now we place the glass block, blah, 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 and put the pin P1 on the page as shown in figure 2. So in figure 2, 
you notice that P1 is over here, so it is right at the normal that you draw. So down here, you put your glass block, right? So here is the one that you put your P1. And then after that, do not remove this pin throughout the experiment. So P1 is definitely control, so please do not move it. Um, then it says what? And it should be very touching the edge of the glass block. Then next step, insert P2. 1 cm from the normal O. Here, there should be the L equals to 1 cm. So down here, you would have the next pin here. Make sure that this is 1 cm and this is basically your L. Okay. Then after that, what you're going to do is that now that you have two pin, you will have light uh, traveling inside the glass block from P1 to P2. And then when you put your eyes over here, so this time around, you have to put your eyes slightly to the right because that is where the light most likely will be coming out yeah, from the glass block. So when light travels through the glass block and out into the air, refraction will occur. And you, when the refraction occur, what you're going to do is that you are going to look into the glass block and you will see P1 and P2. And then after that, you need to shift the thing such that they are aligned. So if you have forgotten how it looked like, I have a sample and I can show it to you. Um, yeah, you can actually go to the Google Drive. The, the entire thing is actually uh, uh, online and uh, you can view it. Let me see where I put it. Oh, I didn't put it. Okay, I will upload it later. Uh, I think it's in my hard disk. So how would the alignment of P1 and P2 look like? Let me check. Uh, I think it's this one. Oh, no, this is the harder one. This is the next lab. lab. Uh, is it this one? Yep, I think this is the one. So, uh, if you still recall, uh, you can see that inside the glass block, look at the base of the pin, uh, you will have P1 and P2, something like that. So your job, uh, but in, in this is another experiment. So in your experiment, your P2 will be in front of the glass block, but your P1 is behind. So what you need to see is that in the glass block, P1 and P2 should align. And then after that, you would use your hand and put a P3 in front, okay? So that the, the new pin that you put in will block the image of P1 and P2, right? Like this. Yeah, then you pin it down, okay? So once you pin it down, Oops, what is this? So once you oh, show photos from this day, no need. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I go to the answer uh, so here. Yeah. So uh, once you look at that, you need to shift it until the two pins are correct. And uh, like I said, uh, while you are doing the experiment, please let me check at least one of your reading. So you, you know that you are doing it correctly. Okay. And what you're going to do, uh, I will skip the caution first. So what you're going to do, once you do that, you will put the pin tree over here. Okay, let me copy this out. Okay, and then I bring it here. Oops. Copy, paste. Yep. So what I'm going to do is that now I have P1, the green dot. Uh, P2, the red dot, and now I have P3. So it says what? We move the glass block. So you remove the glass block. Take away the glass block. And then extend the line P1 to P2. P1 to P2. And then P2 to P3. So you have P2 to P3. Okay, P2 to P3. Let's draw it uh, green. Okay. Extend the line P2 and P3 to intersect the normal. So remember where is the normal? The normal is this line that we drawn where P1 is. Yeah, so this is the green line is my P2 and P3, right? So I have to extend my P2, P3 until it cuts the normal, right? So now I have a new point over here. Yeah, then what am I going to do? I'm going to mark this intersection as I. So I mark it as I, okay? Measure P1, P2. So what is P1, P2? P1, P2 is this blue line over here. I will measure this 
diagonal and I will record it as R and then after that I have to measure P2 to I where is P2 to I? P2 is this red dot and I is this black circle so I have to measure this part, this yellow part the green line on the yellow line and I record it as A right? is it A? yep, I will record it as A so now I will this is one set of experiment. I need to extend the line so that I have R and A. Then after that, what happened? Now I have already removed the glass block, right? So to get the second set of data, I need to put P2 at different length L. So meaning that just now, my P2 is at this red dot, right? And this red dot is LCM from the normal. So what happened? What is my independent variable? I need to put my P2 further so that maybe my L now is 2CM then after that I must put back the glass block on top and then I do the experiment again looking into my eye and then I have another point now what is this problem here the problem here is that if I do five set of data like that uh, my glass block need to be removed and put back four times and at the very beginning of my uh, lesson, I already tell you the placement, the position of your glass block is controlled. So the more time you remove, put back, remove, put back, the more chances of you inducing a random error in your readings. So that's why I have included a caution over here. Right? The caution is if you are just following through the instruction as depicted in the instruction you will be removing and placing your glass block four times yeah and that will introduce a lot of random error unnecessary random error not a lot but unnecessary so what is a smarter way of doing this a smarter way of doing this is like this okay okay one by one okay after you have placed your block right and then you go and measure the thing so you're going to put p1 over here right wait let me you're going to put p1 over here so you put your p1 over here this is your p1 then after that so this is the normal lah. this one the normal that you draw right this is the normal that you draw which is just 1 cm then what you're going to do you're going to put your p3 Am I right? Your P3. Let's use a uh, green. Right? You're going to put your, yeah, sorry, your P2. You're going to put your P2 over here. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong. P2 is not over here. P2 is 1 cm from the normal. So P2 is, uh, P2 is something like that. P2 is 1 cm. And dot, 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 somewhere here. Your P2 will be somewhere here. Right? Then after that, you are going to look into the thing and then maybe you put p3 over here now if you are following the instruction by now after you have your p3 you would have to remove the block and then join the line intersect and then form all those things that that uh, is instruct here but by doing so you have to leave up your glass block so what is a smarter way the smarter way is actually after you do the pin tree you just write down here this is my this is my pin hole one and then you remove the p3 right leaving a dot over here then what do you do you also take out your p2 take it out and don't move the glass block then after that you go and you go and measure you go and measure oh okay this is my uh, next set of reading this is 2cm away I put my P P2 over here then I go and look in my eyes again then I realize oh okay my new P3 is here this is my number 2 set of second set of reading and after I do all the 5 set of reading with different position of P2 and different position of P3 then I remove my glass block right I remove my glass block I draw back out Right, I drop it out the, the normal. Drop it out the normal. Right, and then I start to intersect. Oh, okay. I need to measure this. Then after that, I need to measure 
Uh, uh, this okay then I intersect this is my i okay this is my a1 this is my oh sorry this is my r1 or a1 i think this is r1 a1 then after that then i do for all the five set at one shot that means after you finish the five reading then you take out the glass block and then you start to draw all the intersects right you start to measure all this uh r la a uh, and all that can so after you do all this r and a what does it prove okay what does it prove so this part i'm going to share with you today so this time round is one shot ah. so you go and do the table yourself your r and the a go and check your precision rule r and a they are processed data what is the precision follow dp or follow sf okay is it a special case okay this one you go and figure out okay i want you to try to analyze this you have learned trigonometry so after we extend the line forming r and a what you have here is that you have two triangles right if you look at this from p2 and p3 you can see that actually it forms this triangle yeah and by your angles you know that this angle here theta which is actually your angle of refraction so this is your angle of refraction this is your angle of incident right so if you look at this your angle of refraction will appear uh appear here this is your angle of oops sorry this is your angle of refraction it will reappear here which is actually by alternate triangle right this is an alternate triangle right it means that now this theta is actually here this is the theta right so now you have a triangle like that with this as the angle of refraction and you have this measured this a you have measured and if you look at your p1 p2 you will see that you have another triangle and your angle of incident alpha by alternate triangle will appear here so you have this triangle alpha with the hypotenuse known which is your r so you have already learned your trigonometry right so with your trigonometry you can actually say that your sine theta and sine alpha uh, can be given by this right so if you look at this triangle right they actually share one length okay you see here this is l right you see here this is l right so you can see that the l is the same so if you learn your trigonometry sine theta is equals to opposite over hypotenuse in this case your sine theta is l over a and then if you look at the second triangle your sine alpha is actually uh, opposite over hypotenuse l over r right and you remember in your light okay if you look at this situation whereby light is traveling from the glass medium and getting out in the glass uh, in the air medium with an angle of incident alpha and a refraction angle of theta you can actually use your Schnell's law and form this right n1 sine theta 1 equals to n2 sine theta 2 let's say this is my glass side this is my air side then my glass side would be n of glass sine alpha or theta alpha right because this angle is inside the glass and then in air i would already know my n is one sine in this case the angle in the air is this guy so i will get this yeah so if i rearrange the thing i would have ng is equals to sine theta over sine alpha right that is my refractive index of my glass <laughs> if you are wondering what is the sound that is my let me show you that is my dog sleeping and uh, having a dream i don't know what dream he is having but definitely an exciting one let's see what he's doing now and he kind of wakes up huh. 
still dreaming. You can see the eyeball moving. Cute, huh? Oh, yo. Their life is just eat, sleep, play. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now where are we? We get distracted by my dog. Okay, so we have a uh, have this expression of refractive index equal to sine theta over alpha and what happened is that down here we have an expression of sine theta and sine alpha so if we combine this and we want to have an expression sine theta over sine alpha it will become something like l over a times r over l right uh, if, if you can't follow it's like l over a sine theta ma divided by sine alpha which is a uh, l over r so if i flip the other side it will become this so since the l are uh, common base as you can see from this diagram the l the red line over here they are common base right so the l is actually the same value so you will be able to get an expression of r over a so what we have is that we can sub these and that thing into here and then we will have an expression of ng equals to r over a so what it means is that if we were to plot if we make this a linear so let's uh, make r the subject i will get ng a and we know that ng is a constant right and what we have is we have five set of data of r and, r and a right this five set of data comes from you shifting the pin two correct so we have five set of data of r1 a1 r2 a2 da, 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 da. so meaning that if i were to plot r versus a i would expect it to look like y equals to mx plus c whereby my y now is taking the form of r and my x axis taking form of a so it means that my gradient position will be just ng and i should if my random error is low c is zero but do i need to plot zero zero no because zero zero is not here okay so just draw your best fit line according to the five set of data and once you got the curve uh, once you got the uh, straight line you would know that the gradient of the straight line is actually representing the refractive index of your glass so down here uh you are supposed to determine n use the graph to determine n the refractive index of the glass block so what i want you to write down is you need to write down this very important statement to show your understanding that the gradient of a r a graph okay is representing n and then you can write down n is equals to your y2 y1 x2 x1 and then da, 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 da. remember to use the correct precision ah, and figure out what is the unit is there a unit or is there no unit okay then i will leave the rest to you it is a time practice it's a very simple one five pages and i've gone through with you so good luck and see you on day six okay bye bye